All right, so this is the Tahoe Gear something something XL. It's about an 18 foot teepee, supposedly good for about eight people and light enough that you can backpack with. Now, not to backpack with a ton of other gear. This would be like a separate trip from the car. It weighs, I think, 27 pounds, but I mean, it's totally manageable. I was able to lift it and it hefted around just fine. So we have to think about how we're gonna carry it. It does have some buckles and some compression straps. We might rig a backpack on, um, or we might just take an empty backpack and slide this inside it. Uh, it would probably carry just fine that way. Um, but in any event, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up and we'll take a look how big it is and whether or not it'll suit our purposes. But so far, I mean, it packs up pretty small. You can see, I mean, this is my hand here. So it's probably four or five hands tall. It would really easily fit in a large backpack. Um, so it's not like excessively large and we're just gonna see how suitable it is for our trip here. Now, I'm not that great at unboxing videos, but I'm just taking it out of the pack and wanted to call out a few features. There's a couple of nice things already, even for a relatively inexpensive tent. Um, for one thing, the instructions are not a crappy piece of paper, which always gets lost. Not that you need instructions for ever setting up a tent, but it's always nice when you put something away for a year to remember kind of the order of operations, missing one line somewhere, and it just takes an extra two minutes to figure out. So that's sewn in. It's actually a piece of nylon. Um, so that's kind of a nice touch and the second part is as you can see this is rolled up pretty tight here and you can get a sense of what's about to happen as I unroll it but this is a, a nice tarp material so it does have a full floor sewn in and it is waterproof um, so it's kind of nice to know that this you know is set up that way um, there are TPs that you can buy that don't have floors and while it's fine camping with those you know if you don't mind you know possibly some bugs and or being in an area where there aren't any bugs um, you do have to still worry about rain and it is possible to get wet when that happens so you have to really think about site placement with a full floor like this it's a little less critical you get a little bit of a rain as long as it's not a torrent or a downpour um, and you're pretty much fine so let's get this set up and see what we've got to play with okay now I've just started laying it out and I'll tell you I can already tell this is gonna fit us all because it is hard to give you a sense of the scale but this is a bike over here and this thing runs all the way down to there that is the width of it I haven't that's the major diameter I haven't got it set up but you know that's what we're going to be looking at and that is the set of poles so if you remember the original bag this was in that'll also give you a sense of size here uh, what is nice is that um, it used to be on previous models the floor wasn't sewn in it was a separate piece you had to stake down and although that helps you cut the weight if you're splitting the tent between two people it is an extra thing to get damaged and it is not completely waterproof this is going to be a lot more waterproof because of the way it's built but also if you do want to cut some weight and you have two people carrying gear in there's a i'll have to weigh this later but i would say at least two pounds in these poles and then in the stakes um, so either changing them out to lightweight stakes and or just splitting who carries the poles and the stakes in uh, you can knock a couple of pounds out and have a nice so round two of this set up and I had to step way back in the yard to be able to fit it all in the frame this is filling the entire backyard so uh, we're gonna need a good size campsite but again I feel very confident that there's a lot of room for all of us next step after spreading it out is to get the corner staked down and there are some really nice loops around the corner you know as you go around here these are sewn in buckles that are sewn down into this reinforced selvage edge. It is not rope reinforced, so it's not the most sturdy thing in the world, but a couple of things that I noticed. One is that the side of the floor is actually not sewn all the way. Um, it is over here. What you're looking at over here is the door. So around the door area, it's not, but it has a very large overhanging flap. What's nice about that is that if we do get any snow of any kind or any kind of weather, this flap can be used with some leaves or even some snow itself to provide some extra insulation. Just kind of pile that up onto this flap and then everything else will shed right off of it. Um, the rest of the reinforcements are pretty nice. You know, they're all double sewn in at each point. This is not a 30-year tent. It's not something that's going to last forever, but it does look like we'd get several seasons out of it, so I feel pretty good about the price we paid. Um, so again, going to get the last thing set up here, and oh, by the way, there are windows all around, uh, and the windows are only halfway up, so we'll have to see what we can see out of them, but it's nice to know if something comes trotting through camp, you can peek out and see what's going on out there. So let me get it staked down, and we'll see if we can lift it up. And it is up. Now, I have to say that was just about the easiest tent I've ever set up. I'm a pretty experienced camper, and 
I've probably done tent setups a hundred times over the years with probably a dozen different tents. And this one took all of about two minutes because it's really just eight stakes around the outside edge there. Oh, I lost track, maybe it was 10. Uh, but there's a stake at each corner and that just goes right through this loop. And then there's a single center pole, the most complicated part of which was just fishing around in all the fabric to find the eyelet. And I'm, you can hear I'm choking to death because it's 100 degrees outside right now. Second week of August here near Denver. And uh, I honestly just can't walk in there, it's too hot. Um, but that's not, you know, a normal issue with a tent like this. Usually you're gonna be in the woods, you're gonna be in some shade, and it's not gonna be an oven. Now, I have not set up all the guy lines. So what you have to do as another setup step here is one more thing. They have these guy lines here and these come and provide tension to the outside of the tent so that it gives you more headroom inside. And there are also some guy lines here, and this is the critical thing I'm gonna to need to do now, that give you some ventilation. So I'm gonna to try to brave the heat here, get this thing the rest of the way set up. At the very least, I'll get the other door open so we can get some ventilation. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty impressed so far. So real easy. Okay, now it is going to be impossible to give you a sense of scale in this video. So I'm gonna do what I can here, but just to give you a sense of how large this tent is, there's the center pole. And if I walk from the center pole out to the outside, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, should be slightly more than eight because I got big sandals on here. So it's about nine feet, which is about right. It's about an 18 foot diameter. Um, I wasn't walking to the farthest point. I was walking to the side. So about 18 and, a, you know, let's say eight and a half feet to here. What that means is that it's really easy for somebody to lay their sleeping bag out where you have a little walkway in the middle, walkway to the middle, sleeping bag goes that way, and you have room for a little bit of gear down towards the end because it'll be a pie shape that every person gets. It also means it's really easy to get a stove in here. A lot of people have installed stove jacks, and I probably will too. I have one that we're planning on sewing in, but even if you didn't install a stove jack, it would be really easy to rig something simple where you just closed off one door, put the stove towards the back end here, and you worked out just a little bit of fiberglass cloth like a welding blanket or something on the backside. Like if you didn't want to modify your tent, if you were you know, trying to keep your tent pristine, maybe to resell it or something, that would be an option for you. I would say that I wouldn't want to increase the cost of this tent for this. I really love the entry point. I think we spent 120 on it. For a tent this size that's actually carryable compared to canvas, that's amazing. That's a fantastic price. There's just nothing else on the market that competes with it. There, I, honestly, there's just no competitor. Nothing in that price range. Nothing that gives you a sewn-in tarp floor um, with this amount of room, with this many features that actually has windows, that has ventilation, and that has all of these things going on. Nothing's going to come close. But, you know, at the same time, if you're willing to put a little bit more money into your own tent, you want to make it lighter, there's a couple of things you can do. One is it would be very easy to replace that center pole on site if you knew you were going camping somewhere with straight wood, you know, either with ash, uh, aspen saplings, lodgepole pine, anything along those lines where you're allowed to cut it or you're allowed to take some deadfall and you can rely on it. That pole probably weighs two or three pounds. I'll weigh it when we get done with the video. Um, another thing you could do is you could replace these lines with Amsteel and these spikes here. These are just traditional tent spikes. I mean, nothing special. The ones that bend when you hit a rock, just those. And we all know they're heavy and they're not particularly strong. I mean, these, these steel spikes are so weak you can bend them by hand. So if you wanted to, what you could do is upgrade to some Amsteel lines and some titanium spikes. Uh, and then just use either a trucker's hitch or some other type of uh, sliding hitch knot instead of the tensioners uh, and you would probably save and again I'd have to weigh it to know for sure but I would say as much as a pound I mean there are a lot of lines on this thing so if you're talking about going from 27 pounds to go down to maybe 22 I mean you're saving a lot all right so just to put a pin in this before I go putting everything away I thought I'd measure a couple of things and you can see that um, this is one guy line that I've got detached here. I didn't detach them all because, you know, I didn't want to have to tie them all back on. But you've got two sections, a line here with that one little plastic adjuster or sliding, you know, uh, connector. And then the tensioner. And that's half an ounce. Uh, it's kind of going up and down here. But it's, it, it weighs out to half an ounce. There's a little bit of string kind of hanging off here. 
um, and then um, or, or about 15 grams and then adding the steak you're talking 1.3 ounces now that doesn't sound like much but there are 10 of them around this tin so there's a total and remember I don't have the witch's hat pieces so if you think about it if you multiply that number by 10 1.3 ounces for the steak plus the line maybe round up to 1.4 you're talking about 14 ounces, or just under a pound for lines. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have a 27-pound tent, that's, you know, one, 1 into 27. It's some percentage, less than 10%, uh, probably 5%, well, it's a 4% 4, 4 maybe, something around there, 3 or 4% of the total weight of the tent is just the strings. And then the other thing that you would save money, or excuse me, uh, not money, but um, weight on, is as you walk in here, this pole. So this center pole, which runs all the way to the top here, is a significant portion of weight. I'm going to take down the tent here, and we'll have a look at the weight of the pole, and we'll see what you could save uh, maybe working something else out around that. Okay, now this is a little hard to see because I started overheating the scale in the sun, and it started messing up the LCD. But just to read this off, this is 5.01 pounds. 5 pounds, 1 ounce. So actually, that was a little heavier than I thought. This is a... Um, really nice pole. It's a steel pole and actually its shot cord has a spring in it and it has steel retainers. So you can see that the connections here to prevent them from being cut are actually stainless wire uh, rather than shot cord. There is shot cord but it's down in the tube. I don't know if you can see it down there just providing some spring effect. So I have to say it's actually a fairly nicely made pole. Like, you know I wasn't expecting something that would last very long um, but five pounds is still five pounds, so that would be the second way that you could cut weight on this tent if you had any feeling that you could make a reliable pole out in the woods. And again, uh, I'll, I'll measure this pole and put the measurement in, but if you knew that you could make a pole out in the woods and be able to get it into there, um, I would think that that would be a significant amount of your weight. So you're talking five pounds into 27. Uh, now you're at about 20% of the weight just for the pole. So, um, yeah, very happy with the purchase, and um, probably leave it up, have a, another look at it here, and then uh, we'll start packing it up. Thanks for watching.